All right, Ms. Powell, I just have a few questions for you. Do you understand the nature of the charges that have been reaccused and that you would be pleading guilty to today? I do, sir. And you've heard all the rights that uh, the state has gone through that you would waive by going forward with this plea. Do you still wish to waive those rights? I do. And are you pleading guilty today because you agree that there is a sufficient factual basis, that there are enough facts that support this plea of guilty? I do. Mr. Rafferty, are you satisfied your client is competent in understanding that the plea is voluntary and that there is a sufficient factual basis for entering this plea? Yes, Ross. I agree and find that there is a sufficient factual basis, and I find this plea of guilty to be knowingly, voluntarily, and intelligently entered. Uh, there's been a request uh, that this sentence be entered under the First Offender Act, and the court will approve that request to withhold adjudication. Uh, but I must notify you, Ms. Powell, that you're not allowed to withdraw your plea simply because you do not comply with the terms of the sentence. And the terms of that sentence would be as recommended by the parties. Uh, on count one, conspiracy to commit intentional interference with the performance of election duties. The sentence would be 12 months probation. And counts two through six would also be 12 months probation consecutive to each other and to count one uh, for a total term of essentially six years probation, but we're going to translate that into months for the sentence sheet. Special conditions would include a $6,000 fine with $1,000 for each count. Restitution to be paid in the amount of $2,700 uh, to the Secretary, Georgia Secretary of State's office. Uh, you are uh, to have written a letter, uh, which you've already satisfied. You're also to provide a recorded proffer with the state, which you've already satisfied. You're to testify truthfully uh, against any and all co-defendants in this matter at any uh, upcoming proceedings. You are not to have any communication with any witness any co-defendant or any member of the media concerning uh, the facts or circumstances of this case. And uh, you'd provide all documents to the district attorney's office uh, as uh, requested and relevant to this case. Again, Ms. Young, I would ask uh, if you could provide the uh, state's recitation of the exact phrasing of these, and we'll make sure that's reflected in the final disposition form. Uh, in order to make this Sentence consistent with uh, Mr. Hall, I, I do believe it would be uh, appropriate, and I'm willing to include the language uh, involving moral turpitude, uh, although that language being included on the sentence form may not ultimately have any effect on the um, entities responsible for actually determining that. Are there any other express conditions and special conditions, Ms. Young, that uh, you would like to see reflected on this sentence? I think you covered it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rafferty, is there anything else that uh, you think needs to be on the record today? Ms. Young, uh, do you use the state um, have an announcement regarding the indictment in this case? Uh, yes, Your Honor. The state will be entering an all process order on um, indictment number 23SC188947 as it applies to Ms. Powell. All right. Well, upon being provided a copy of that motion, uh, I will sign it and the charges in the indictment will be dismissed. All right, if there's uh, nothing else, then we will uh, conclude this and be off the record. Good luck, Ms. Powell. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you, Jason.